Hello and welcome back to SuperCloud 3, where we're discussing and dissecting the future of AI and enabled security in the cloud. And I'm pleased to welcome to the program, Alvina Antar, who's the CIO of Okta. Alvina, welcome, it's good to see you. Thank you, thank you, Dave, for having me. You're very welcome. I, I want to first review your role. You know, a lot of tech CIOs, they're pulled <laughs> into sales calls by the salespeople. They want to help them improve their customers internal security and, and use the examples that you've set. Uh, in your case specifically, how do you spend most of your time? Is it on making Okta better or is it helping you know, customers do better or a combination? Well, yeah, thanks for, thanks for asking that. I would say what I'm, I, in August, I'm hitting three years at Okta and that has evolved. And the, when I first joined, it was really focused on on internal internal structure, you know, really looking at the level of um, uh, organizational structure that I needed, and building an enterprise product, enterprise engineering, enterprise data infrastructure, and operations organization that has evolved dramatically in building almost a tech ops organization within infrastructure and operations and enterprise security, um, and a strategy organization that helps us think think of, 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 of what is needed to be able to evolve the business and drive our growth and scale of our business exponentially. And so uh, that has been the first three years of my run at Okta. And within our, our, our organization, we have an Okta and Okta function. And that function has transformed the way we work, not only within product and engineering and in building deep expertise within our product and um, not just, not just Okta and all the capabilities within our workforce identity and customer identity capabilities, but also um, Okta in the ecosystem, the actual integration across, across uh, uh, the ecosystem that is required to be able to uh, transform our, our employee experience as well as our customer experience. And that effort, that initiative, the Okta on Okta initiative has now you know, shifted um, and, and, and taken a ton of focus um, organically to customer engagements. And so I spend a ton of time with customers and partners and prospects who are really wanting to understand what we do, how we run our business, um, how, we, how we evolve our employee experience and, and what we're doing with our passwordless journey, which I know we'll talk about, um, what we're doing with governance uh, and how are we uh, you know, really looking at our customer our end-to-end -end customer experience and driving the most seamless and secure customer experience. And so actually I just last week, I was in Australia uh, in Sydney and Melbourne and had the most beautiful time there. Uh, it was my first time visiting and the level of engagement from our customers and partners and interest in what we're doing internally, uh, you know, across all industries at all sizes um, was, was, was so meaningful and so valuable. And so that's actually one of the best parts of my gig now. So thank you for that. So what's the relationship between your office and the SecOps team at Okta? I mean, a lot of tech CIOs you know, do double duty uh, as the CISO. So how has that relationship evolved? You know, what's your particular point of view on the ideal regime? you know, for this so-called AI powered world? Does that change over time? But I'm interested in the sort of, are you the CISO? Is there a CISO? Is that individual a counterpart? Uh, does that individual work for you? Do you work for that individual? Where do you report that whole regime? If you could give us, you know, your view. Yeah, I mean, so every organization is different. I actually am, am working closely with our Chief Security Officer David Bradbury and and his organization and um, and 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 our 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 structure is is distributed right so so and 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 what we've done in the evolution of of, of our security structure is that you know security ultimately is driven through our our Chief Security Officer in a distributed model across the organization with my organization responsible and accountable for enterprise security. We have a you know infrastructure, a, a product security focus within our product and engineering focus, and so it's a it's a it's a, it's a distributed model, and, and and really wanting to ensure that that we've got an we've got a mindset where security is everyone's priority, 
across the entire organization, not just mine from an enterprise perspective, not just you know the product, um, you know infrastructure, you know security team, um, but everyone's responsibility. And building a security first culture is 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 our joint responsibility and accountability. And and so you know that's the way that our, our structure is 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 set up. And what I what I've realized and what we talk a lot about, David and myself to customers, um, is 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 how identity is actually driving the most incredible um, and strengthened relationship and partnership um, across, across security and IT. Um, and, 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 and the reason for that is, is that, you know, in the past it was, you know, security makes, you know, strategic decisions around what, 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 what we need to do to be able to, 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 to drive our overall strategy. And IT is in a position to execute. Um, without questioning the strategy, and and that doesn't fly, um, especially if you if, if you if, with if you're thinking about um, you know how to operate with an identity first mindset um, and and ensuring that what you're enabling um, is is this balance between security as well as the experience, and that they're not mutually exclusive, and the importance of having the 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 joint accountability. For all the initiatives that we have tied to security, um, you know, you know, across across both the, the the CIO and CISO's responsibility, and and that is what allows us to to to, to shift our our mindset um, that you know driving a hardened security posture doesn't necessarily mean that you're that you're now creating a a a a, 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 a friction a frictioned you know um, experience, but you're actually you know. All that we're talking about with our passwordless journey is is actually hardening security while creating the most seamless, most um, um, you know least disruptive experience for our employees. And so and so they go hand in hand. And and so your peers with the CISO, CISO, correct, or the CSO, yeah. I guess you call it. It's a, so it's interesting because we've seen over the, over the years, you know, security was just the domain of the the security people. That they, nobody else cared about it. And then it went up to the board, and of course, then it was sort of pushed down throughout the organization, and now it's sort of middle out, and everybody, as you just described. I, I wonder, you were talking earlier about sort of your role with the ecosystem, and it struck me that, you know, you are a, a, a super cloud enabler in that sense that you, 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 I'm sure you're dealing with many different clouds and many companies that run on different clouds. I'm talking about the ecosystem now. So I wonder if you could, could, could talk about what's different with regard to multi-cloud security versus say just on-prem or hybrid or just in the cloud? Are there opportunities to enhance security across multiple clouds or does multi-cloud just bring more complexity from a security st standpoint and just a more complicated set of opticals? What's your experience been, Elvina? I think it's an opportunity. I mean, I see, you know, multi-cloud is 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 where everyone is is focused not just from increasing reliability and redundancy but also from an efficiency from from driving you know efficiency which is top of mind for all of us um and so you know the yeah and it does add complexity from a security perspective and and that's the opportunity that we all have um to ensure that we're you know now balancing our tools and methods and capabilities that are that may be different across multiple platforms and so and so making sure that we, you know, think about the configurations and how and how, you know, we align configurations across across the multiple platforms, thinking about data residency and where you're storing your data and 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 and, and how you're making sure that it's secured across all the distributed platforms, you know, thinking about compliance um, and how to main, maintain controls uh, from an audit perspective across multiple platforms. And then logging and monitoring, you know, is is, is obviously top of mind, um, as we need to ensure that the alerting and triaging is consistent and spans across across the multi-cloud uh, environments. And so, you know, the reality is what multi-cloud presents and reinforces is, is is that the boundary is limitless, right? We need to think about our environment as boundaryless, whether it's you know, through multi-infrastructure, whether it's through multiple devices, whether the perimeter, you know, we, we talk about how the perimeter, the security perimeter has expanded, um, not just across your employees, but think about your contractors and your extended workforce. Um, and so needing to be able to have a centralized identity model across, you know, this, this expanded perimeter 
is critical um, in a in a multi cloud and multi 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 everything environment. So thinking about what you just said about multi cloud and security specifically, I'm interested as it relates to AI. Where do you think? and your colleagues think, and the technologists and Okta and the broader industry, where's the low hanging fruit for attackers? And the same question for defenders. I mean, normally the attackers are a little bit ahead, sometimes a lot of, a lot ahead. Uh, is that the case with AI? What, what are you seeing in, uh, in, in that regard? Yeah, well, I mean, with we all know, right? I mean, AI, it's not just a trend, right? We've been talking about AI for years and now um, you know, it, the, the, the level of focus, you know, we know that, 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 that the full potential is yet to be realized with, with AI. I mean, it comes with, um, you know, the advancements in algorithms and the computational capabilities that exist, and most importantly, data, right? The, the rise of, of AI, um, it's, it truly signifies a platform shift, right? Paving the way for new applications, right? And, you know, with ChatGPT and OpenAI, um, that is that is one of of many new applications that will that will emerge. Uh, that we are excited to to see the level of innovation that will come with new new applications, and and we know that each of those applications requires a login, and requires a zero trust model across 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 all the applications. And we see ourselves from an identity perspective as 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 the most equipped right to be able to offer solutions to, to all the new new applications that emerge. And it's exciting, you know, just even within our own products, within workforce identity and customer identity, we have capabilities that, that we continue to further evolve as it relates to AI across our security center and across threat insights, um, you know, that, 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 are, that, are, that are areas that allow us to be able to understand, um, you know, what, what, what is happening um, and, and, and provide signals and, 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 and insights uh, to our customers around risks to prevent uh, attacks. And so this is something that will continue to emerge and, and, and we are focused both within our products and within our organization to, to further uh, take advantage of, 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 of AI. And then you had mentioned, you know, the attackers and, and defenders. Um, you know, I mean, from an attacker's perspective, like data loss and exposing IP is at a greater risk, right, with AI. With AI, with feeding tools, with, proprietary data um, that you had not intended. Uh, and, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, really thinking about controls, while we don't want to limit the innovation across the organization, uh, and we want to continue to empower the, the organization to innovate, we need to be able to also have the level of controls um, and, and guardrails and policies around you know, what is required to, to have the appropriate use of AI. And so that is a, that is a focus from an attacker you know, you know, perspective. And then from a defender, I mean, I would say um, it really helps us, you know, AI helps us get quicker access to information, right? Um, we can prevent and limit the impact of security attacks because these insights exist. I mentioned threat insights, I mentioned security center within customer identity cloud. These are all insights that allow us to have quicker access to information for those that are, you know, taking advantage of our identity capabilities across both our employee experience and our workforce experience. Um, and then, you know, just improved analytics, right? The the the, the data has to be trained, but um, you know, we need to continue to, to 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 focus on training the data to allow us to have analytics and insights that allow us to make data driven decisions. So we're not. We're now not just focused on accumulating the data from disparate cloud environments. Now we have access to the data. We have access to intelligent data that allows us to make decisions, you know, and, and it gives us um, more, more thoughtful alerting, um, you know, because we train the data. And so now we can spot, um, you know, generated, generated attacks, whether they're AI generated, which will create even more complexity for for us um, as organizations, right? How do we attack malicious events that no longer are generated by humans, right? They're, they're gener generated by AI. And, and how can we um, you know, really look at, look at what is needed to be able to safeguard um, and, and, and take advantage of AI to understand those attacks um, and, and, and be able to have uh, more automated ways um, and triggers to, to prevent the attacks. 
So I wonder if you could give us your CIO perspective on the following. So one of the themes, I don't know if you're at RSA conference this year, early this year, uh, Rohit Guy had a, a, a talk and he talked about security's identity crisis, very clever. Um, and so my question is, is identity across clouds, I mean, you seem like you're pretty optimistic before as that's an enabler. Uh, we're, we've talked about in the past, and like the last super cloud, a lot of the customers that we talked to said, well, our, our way of dealing with multi-cloud complexity is we go mono-cloud. Now the reality is when you talk to their colleagues in the organization, they've got multiple mono-cloud, so they're multi-cloud. The problem is those clouds don't necessarily talk to each other. So how do you see that in terms of adoption of identity? Because you're, you know, somebody might be in Azure with one identity on-prem with another and using Okta for a third, et cetera. Do you see that the industry is going to be able to get to the point, whether it's you know, cross-cloud standards or maybe it's a de facto standard where, where they can actually accelerate adoption for this notion of cross-cloud, multi-cloud services, what we call super cloud? Your thoughts? Yeah, thanks for asking, um, Dave. What I, what I would say is you know, what we continue to see, and actually even in, in, in this environment, in the macroeconomic environment that we're, that we're under, um, you know, we see an increased uh, focus around our, our customers thinking about transformation. Um, you know, because the reality is in this environment, unless unless you're 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 thinking about transformation and and you're thinking about cloud adoption, you may not survive in this environment. And so, um, multi cloud is is here to stay, and we continue to see increased cloud adoption um, in this in this environment. And 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 so, you know, in order for workforces to to evolve. Um, and you know, the, the need to be able to, to, to really think about um, you know, you know, what is needed to transform your organization, what is needed to, 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 to be able to adopt the cloud, um, you need that level of neutrality, right? You need to be able to ensure neutrality. You mentioned multiple identities across different platforms. I mean, that's not going to allow you to have a single pane of glass. Um, and, and, and so you know, cloud adoption and the, the emergence and continuation of, of, of increased cloud adoption will reinforce the importance of identity being neutral, the importance of identity um, ensuring that, that it spans all devices, all infrastructure, all environments. Um, and, and, and so, you know, you know, we see this as, as, as a huge opportunity to, to, to continue to, to, to drive um, an increased adoption for our customers, and and and, and you know, in terms of like standards, um, we have we have you know obviously the security standards um, you know that, that 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 is that is something that has been key right from a, from an identity perspective. Um, we've 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 we have a robust suite um, of, of of you know of opportunities for us to continue to to think about the, the overall standards. And like, if you think of FIDO2 and SAML2, like those are standards that will continue to, 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 to be embraced, right? Whether it's FIDO for phishing resistance or SAML2 um, and the OpenID Connect for Federation. Those are areas that will continue to, 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 be, to be relied on and, and we will continue to focus on, on, on adopting and, and embracing those standards. All right, I got a two part question for you. Um, and it deals with culture, but <laughs> I'll tell you a quick story. Last month we were at Cisco Live and they had Jim Gaffigan come in and he was telling jokes, he's hilarious. And he says to the audience, you've been a great audience. I look around and I see a bunch of old guys and uh, which was so true. The whole audience was just, you know, older men. Um, you're not the prototypical picture of a CIO. It's changing somewhat. But so my, my question is two part, one is sort of the, the w woman in tech, the CIO women in tech, angle, but also it relates to what your approach is to build a strong, sustainable security culture. Well, yeah, thank you um, for highlighting that because the reality is we've gone backwards, right? Um, we've, especially in, you know, the, the, the environment that we've had with COVID and, uh, you know, we, we've, instead of accelerating our, 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 our opportunity of having um, you know, an increased women in, in technology, we've actually gone backwards if you look at if you look at the numbers. And and it's unfortunate. And you know, that's something that 
you know, I've been in IT my entire career. I may not look like a standard, you know, your, 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 your typical CIO, but I've spent 25, 26 years in IT from when I started as an engineer at Dell. And, and, and that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be few and far between. And, you know, I'm on a mission and I know many of my peers and, you know, what I would say is we have, uh, you know, uh, in, we have we have communities where and networks that I'm proud to be a part of uh, that that really that really bring us together. Um, you know the, the CIO females in the Bay Area. We have a Silicon Valley Women's Network. We have a T200 organization that are that are that are women globally across all the C-suite. Um, these are organizations that I'm I'm and networks that I'm proud and thriving networks that I'm proud to be a part of. And the in, entire intent of those networks are to be able to lift uh, the next generation of females in technology. And 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 what and I and I feel accountable and um, committed to be able to to really look at you know what is needed to to be able to drive this change and accelerate um, you know the, the number of women sitting in my seat. Uh, and so that's something that I'm extremely passionate about. And, and, and then, and then in terms of, you know, the, 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 the security culture, you know, I, I, what I touched on, I mean, we, we are, we are really, you know, looking at how to transform the culture and not thinking of, of security as, as the CISO's job, or even my responsibility from an enterprise security perspective, but, but how do we, you know, shift that focus and shift that mindset in creating a culture where every single employee, regardless of industry, I mean, obviously from us as an identity, um, you know, company that focuses on uh, making sure that everyone is safely to use any technology, like, of course, we're, you know, our organization of 6,000 global uh, employees are, 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 are focused on and, and, and see themselves as, 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 as you know, a, a, a integral part of our security strategy. But every company across every industry uh, and every employee across every industry should 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 evolve, and that culture should should um, should should is something that I that I see will will continue to evolve. And and it's and it can't just be driven by the CISO. It needs to be driven by um, you know every every leader within the organization. Um, and so you know I continue to take an active role, uh, and I feel like our partnership across 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 Okta. Um, is is showcasing that, and those are a lot. A lot of the conversations that we actually have with our customers is how is our partnership, um, you know, really changing the, the game for the security culture in the industry. And so, um, you know, I'm I'm excited to be able to see that evolution because it's 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 it, it can't be an afterthought. We can't continue to react to attacks um, and then think about security. Right. It needs to be top of mind. It needs to be foundational. It needs to be, you know. Um, you know, you know, we, we talk about security by design, like that should be embedded in all that we do, where we think security first uh, and security by design. And and that's what you'll see, um, you know, every organization look to evolve uh, and it has to start from the top. Yeah, congratulations on both those those fronts. I appreciate that answer. Last question is, is a topic that you brought up before and I, I saved it for last because I think everybody can, can relate to to password less, right? Everybody hates having to forget, you know, forgetting their passwords, having to change the password, you change a device. It's just, it's the scourge of, 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 of passwords. I mean, it reminds me of, you know, the old days of email where you had to like archive all your emails. It's just, it's a terrible experience. So it sounds like there's hope. <laughs> so can we ever get to a world where there are no passwords? Yes, um, there's there's definite hope, and and that is something that that I'm excited about in terms of our journey. And one thing that I that I share, uh, you know, we, we, we've 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 initially talked about you know password list as as this dream, you know, like like will as you mentioned, like will we ever get there? But the reality is, you know, phishing resistant factors and the evolution of 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 all that we're doing to be able to drive, um, you know, this this seamless experience is allowing and biometrics, um, you know, is is allowing us to actually realize this vision. Uh, and we're this is something that's top of mind for us, you know, in our in our Octa and Octa efforts. Um, you know, what we've deployed internally is our new Octa Identity Engine, 
um, that allows us to have, that, that actually takes advantage of fast pass capabilities that, that get us to, you know, that get us to a place where we are extremely close to, you know, in the 90 percentile to getting to 100% passwordless at Okta. And we are sharing our journey. You know, what is, what is, we are sharing, you know, the, 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 the steps, you know, in, in our path passwordless journey, we are, we are, we are, we are going through, you know, what is required to be able to actually realize this vision and that it's not, um, you know, a, a, a dream, but it's actually a reality and it's an expectation that every organization should have. Yeah. I, I, 90% is amazing. I mean, I'm probably at about 12% and can't wait to get to 50%. But Alvina, thanks so much for coming on the program. Really appreciate your time and your insights and love to have you back sometime. I'd love to join you back. They, thank you so much for all that you're doing with this incredible program. Uh, you bet. All right, keep it right there. We got more discussions. We have fireside chats. We got power panels and conversations with tech athletes like Alvina and much more. You're watching SuperCloud 3. I'm Dave Vellante, the future of AI enabled cloud security.